Let's go through a couple of solutions to this programming quiz where we're trying to get 100% branch coverage for an 8-bit adder. And so the way I solve this is using exhaustive testing. The insight is, is that 8-bit inputs characterize the full range of values from 0 to 255. And so what I can do is write a function test exhaustive, which lets I loop over the range 0 to 255, J loop over the range 0 to 255, and then define a myAdd function, which is going to invoke the 8-bit adder with those inputs. Then what we're going to do is print the output and assert that the result is equal to the actual I plus J output. And this goes a little bit beyond what I asked you to do for the quiz, but it's a good idea to make sure that the code is right. So now this myAdd function is kind of where the magic happens. And so what myAdd does is takes an integer A and splits that into the bits, splits it into eight bits that represent the same value as the integer, do the same thing for B, then we're going to call the add eight bits function with the bits of A into bits of B, resulting in a set of bits representing the sum. Then we can glue those back into an integer, and that's going to be returned to check in our assertion. So let's look at the split and glue functions. So split is pretty simple. It just takes an integer, and if n bitwise and with 1 is true, then the low order bit must have been set, and so we'll return a true value for the low order bit position. Then we'll go to comparing with 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Together, these tests serve to split the input integer into a sequence of true and false values that together represent that integer. Now, the glue function does exactly the opposite thing. It takes a series of Boolean values and glues them into an integer. And the way do th we do this is by keeping a running total. So if B0, that is to say, if the low order bit of the input is set, we increment our running total by 1. If the next bit is set, we increment it by 2. If the third bit is set, we increment it by 4. Then 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. And so together, this lets us reconstruct an integer value from its set of bits. And so when we call these things together, we can verify that the code actually implements an adder. And incidentally, because we're testing it on all possible values, we're going to get full branch coverage. And so let's just make sure that that's the case. OK, so we just ran the code. Now let's look at the coverage output. So here we're looking at the coverage output. And what we can see is that of the 85 statements present in the adder, all 85 of them ran, so none of them were missing. And there were zero partially executed comparison statements. That is to say, zero comparison statements, which only went one way. So if we go look through the code, we can see that indeed, the coverage tool believes that it's all covered. So now let's look at an alternative solution. So instead of our exhaustive test, we could have written a much smaller test that gets 100% branch coverage. And this is based on the observation that if we look at the cascading series of tests in the branch coverage, basically all that matters are whether the input bits are 0 or 1. And so if we call the adder with all 0 bits, we call it with all 1 bits, and then we need one more test case, we can get 100% branch coverage this way. So let's just make sure that that's indeed the case. I'm going to run the adder again. This time it's not printing out anything. And let's go back to the web page. This time we have 81 statements. And they all ran, and we have zero missing statements and zero partially executed statements. And so as you can see, the coverage tool believes that just these three really simple test cases were sufficient to get 100% branch coverage of our adder.